ಕೃಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸೋಲ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸೋಲ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಧೀರಸ್ತತ್ರ ನ ಮುಹ್ಯತಿ ಎ ಧೀರ ಎ ಸೋಬರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಎ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ನೋ ಹೌ ದಿ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಅಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಹೌ the soul after leaving one body at the time of death accepts another body now to know this it's not possible by any experimental method it is only possible if we learn from the supreme lord krishna as he explains in the bhagavad gita so we should uh, remember uh, that the soul is very 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 tiny particle the gross body this external body everyone can see but inside this body there is another body mind intelligence ego subtle body that we cannot see neither we can see the soul the soul is even finer than that so in the vedas it is described what is the dimension of the soul the vedas describe keshagra shatabhagasya shatadha kalpitasya cha what does this mean if you take the uh, keshagra kesha means hair agra means the tip tip of the hair point if you divide into 100 parts and take that 100th part and divide further into 100 parts then that very 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 tiny 1/10000th part of the tip of the hair point in size that is the dimension of the soul now as far as uh, scientists are concerned they say a point has no length and breadth has no dimension so to speak but here the vedas are describing that which is almost like you know having no length and breadth that point if at all somebody could actually divide that into 10000 parts then one such very 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 tiny part would be the dimension of the soul so obviously it is not possible to perceive the soul by any of the uh, ordinary methods therefore it is said you simply perceive there is soul based on the authority of the vedas based on the authority of the supreme lord krishna <coughs> describing this whole subject matter another example phila prabhupad gives supposing there is some good uh, fragrance uh, and it is being carried by the air you smell 
the air that is passing and you say, oh, very nice fragrance. But you cannot see the smell, neither you can see the carrier of the smell, the air. So only when it comes and contacts your nose, your instrument for smelling, then only you can get to know the smell. So therefore, uh, many things are there like that, which are subject to certain conditions and which are not perceptible by all the senses or not perceptible by our mind sometimes even. So this change of body at the time of death by the soul is also described by Krishna. We have to hear this description and we have to understand and we have to accept it as a fact. Now whatever is stated in the scriptures, in the Vedas, is 100% fact. It is the truth. It is the reality. Because the source is Krishna. The source is the supreme absolute truth. Therefore, we hear the authoritative description in the Bhagavad Gita. It is said the soul is changing bodies like dresses. Sometimes the soul has a human form of body, like we have just now, all of us, we have a human form of body. Sometimes the soul has a form of a cat or a dog or a tree or an aquatic or a demigod, a devata. Of course, we are not familiar with uh, devatas in terms of having seen any devata, but devatas also have a particular type of body. They live in the higher planets and uh, they are also having a particular form of body. So the same soul, same soul means the quality and the the, the size of the spirit is the same, whichever body it inhabits. It is the same small tiny particle of spirit, one ten thousand part of the tip of the hair point in size. That soul is the actually the living force inside the body. However big or small the body may be, the living force is the soul. So this is the basic principle of spiritual understanding. Understanding that every person is the soul, not the body. And then if we understand the soul, it's important because by understanding what is soul, we can also understand God. How is that possible? Just like if there is a bag of rice, you take a few grains of rice, and you see the few grains and understand what is the quality of rice in the bag. Similarly, if you understand the spirit soul inside this body, then you can understand God also. Of course, God is spiritual, but he is the supreme spirit. He is the unlimited spirit. He is the... Uh, um, greatest spiritual person. So like that, uh, you can understand God, but before that you have to first understand what is uh, spirit. And now there are two ways of understanding. One is called the ascending process and other one is called the descending process. Aroha pantha, avaroha pantha. Now, our process uh, in the Vedic culture is called a descending process. That means we receive the perfect knowledge from the perfect source, Krishna, the Supreme Lord. It comes down, just like Krishna first revealed this knowledge 
to Brahma, the first created being in the whole creation, in this whole universe. Then Brahma became enlightened and he revealed the same knowledge to his sons and disciples. Like Narada, he revealed to Narada. Narada became enlightened and Narada revealed to Vyasa. Like that, it is coming down. It's called descending, coming down from Krishna to the others. Generation after generation, it is coming down. The ascending process is the other way. Like uh, people say that uh, formerly there was uh, um, there were people who did not know anything. Then they started uh, trying to find out or ascertain what is this world or what is uh, the earth or what is the, then the sky, whatever. So humanity, according to them, has been gathering more and more knowledge and making advancement. And like that, they expect that by this process of gathering knowledge, accumulating knowledge over generations, gradually they will come to know more and more and more. But this process is prone to a lot of uh, defects. Because as I explained earlier, every human being has got four defects, four fundamental defects. So because of these defects, whatever knowledge we try to gather by our own endeavor, by our own efforts, by our own methods, by using our tiny uh, mind or intelligence, by our imperfect senses, it is always going to be defective. Therefore, the ascending process cannot be helpful in knowing about spiritual subject matter. Therefore, the descending process is the proper method of getting spiritual knowledge, getting knowledge of the soul and God. Uh, Srila Prabhupada gives another example. Supposing there is somebody, uh, some sound on the roof of the house where you are living. Now, you are not able to see what is happening on the roof. But sitting inside a room, you may conjecture or you may theorize, oh, the sound is due to some cat or it's due to some bird or it's due to some human being or due to some... Uh, wind blowing. You may theorize like that. You can go on speculating. But if there is a person present on the top of the roof and that person comes down and tells you exactly what is the cause for that sound on the top of the roof. You just heard and he also heard and he was present right there. So that is perfect knowledge. That is not based on any speculation or theorizing or conjecturing or guessing, no. Similarly, the descending process is perfect knowledge given by one who knows, one who is the ultimate source. So, uh, this perfect knowledge is there in the scriptures and it is handed down by authoritative uh, spiritual masters and it is uh, present in the, it is explained in the Vedas also. Just like what is being told by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita is there in the original Vedas, the Upanishads. In the Upanishads it is described Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Eko Bahunam Yo Vidadati Kama What does this mean? Uh, it means Nitya. Nitya means eternal. So God is eternal. God is one. Nitya, singular, one person. God is eternal. Nityanam is all of us, all the living beings. All the living beings are also eternal. Both God and all of us, both are eternal. 
we are actually a very very tiny part of god we are very very tiny part of god each one of us and chetanas chetana na means uh, god is conscious person we are also conscious persons chetana means conscious but even though we have this similarity of qualities we are eternal and conscious persons god is also eternal conscious person but the difference is echo the one eternal conscious person god one and only one god is maintaining or is the maintainer of all the other living beings all the other eternal conscious beings so this difference exists in spite of the similarity so this information is uh, obtained from the upanishads so exactly what krishna is telling we are eternal we don't uh, the soul is not changing the body is changing the body does not last forever the soul is everlasting always so uh, the number of souls number of living entities living beings uh, is actually described as asankhya countless we cannot count how many are there so many billions trillions we can't count we cannot count so therefore the usage we have to clearly note one and many singular and plural so therefore uh, these living entities living beings are having different forms of bodies as is mentioned earlier somebody could have some of the souls have a human form of body some have a form of body of a cat or a dog or a worm or an insect or a bird or a reptile or a plant or a devata so in the scriptures again it is described that there are different forms of bodies 84 lakh types of bodies are there that is also classified jalaja navalakshani 9 lakh varieties of aquatics are there in the water those living beings living in the water hmm? so there are 9 lakh varieties the varieties are 9 lakhs hmm? it's not the number in each variety there are several huge number of uh, such uh, aquatics but total number of varieties uh, is 9 lakhs then sthavara laksha vimshati the plants and uh, Uh, trees the vegetable kingdom different forms are 20 lakh forms 20 lakhs then kramayo rudra sankhyaka the insects of different varieties how many varieties of insects are there they are uh, 11 lakhs so 9 lakh aquatic varieties 20 lakh plants and trees varieties and 11 lakh uh, insect varieties pakshinam dashalakshanam 10 lakh varieties of birds then pashavah trimshalakshani the bees the four legged animals they are uh, 30 lakhs 30 30 lakh trimshat then chaturlakshani manushah human beings are 4 lakhs Four lakh varieties. This four lakh varieties of human beings is what is of interest to us. Most of the varieties of humans are uncivilized people. So civilized human beings are very, 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 very few. It is very easily understandable. If you dig earth, then in just one. Uh, foot by one foot by one foot, one cubic foot. How many millions of uh, worms will be there, or 
small microbes will be there or very very tiny insects will be there we can't even count so compared to all other uh, types of bodies or living beings in different lower species lower forms of life human beings are very very few so shila prabhupar is explaining how the one supreme lord is actually the maintainer of all the countless living beings to help us understand this prabhupar is telling that we are very very few compared to the other living beings other forms but we have got so many economic problems and especially in the modern age we are very busy trying to develop our economic condition always busy but the animals the insects the birds the aquatics they have no problem they are not starving they are not having any scarcity of food each and every one of them they are getting whatever their needs just like you take an elephant it eats at a time maybe 50 or 100 kilo but there are millions of elephants in the african jungle they are getting whatever their need is uh, whatever their requirement a tiny ant may be there but that ant is also getting its tiny requirement of small requirement of food so every living being is getting the food provided by the supreme lord the one and only supreme lord it's only in human society that uh, because we have completely forgotten god we have created so many problems for ourselves none of the other species they have any problem for their maintenance basic needs especially food they don't have any scarcity but we have scarcity or we have some problem or we have some difficulty or we have to do hard work in some factory or industry or some business or something like that even for our uh, basic uh, needs to be met with we are forced to actually work so hard so actually Uh, we forget the fundamental um, truth that actually our maintenance is taken care of by god god is provided but if somebody becomes godless if somebody forgets god then they are going to face a lot of problems so therefore this knowledge is knowledge about our self and especially knowledge about god especially as it is revealed in the bhagavad gita is very very important for all the human beings it's very important so we should understand we are eternal as spirit so we are changing our body but change of body also to understand this change of body we should remember there are two kinds of bodies one is a gross body other one is a subtle body what is the difference this gross body is an external covering for the uh, subtle body the subtle body is made up of mind intelligence and ego it is the subtle body which is of a particular mentality just like to give an example uh, a dog has got a dog's mentality a, a cat has got a cat mentality so a dog behaves like a dog because of that mentality only the dog has got a particular external gross body of that particular shape of that particular type its eyes its ears its nose its tongue uh, its sense of touch everything is suited for the dog the dog's body external gross body is suited for the dog mentality similarly we should understand even our own body 
the human body also it is suited for the human mentality the human mentality so if we change body at death then the next body we are going to get the gross body we are going to get we actually leave this body generally we leave with our subtle body we have to leave behind this gross body at the time of death but we go with our subtle body our mind intelligence and ego to another gross body so that next gross body which type of gross body we going to get 84 lakh species are there types of gross bodies so which one are we going to enter which type of body we going to get next that depends on what is our state of mind at the time of death if somebody has developed a dog mentality they are going to get a dog's body in the next life if somebody has got a human mentality they will get a human body if somebody has developed a a a godly mentality they will get the body of a devata and somebody has developed spiritual mind or spiritual mentality or spiritual nature they will go to krishna so the change of body is very very vital very crucial it depends on what type of mentality we develop in this life and it takes time to develop a particular type of mentality what type of activities we perform what type of knowledge we actually culture what type of uh, people we associate with all this is going to determine the type of mentality we develop and that mentality which we have developed by the time death comes exactly according to that mentality we are going to get the next body change the body so uh, by all this can be understood by hearing hearing properly and carefully from the proper source hearing from the proper source the 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 actual knowledge can be very nicely uh, understood the specific knowledge particularly it is stressed that uh, the topmost authority who can give us this knowledge is krishna himself so this uh, krishna consciousness movement is trying to propagate that you hear from the supreme authority krishna and krishna has personally spoken the bhagavad gita to arjuna and through arjuna krishna is instructing all of us so try to hear from krishna krishna is the topmost authority the supreme personality of god as accepted by all other great saintly persons great sages great acharyas our uh, vedic culture is completely based on the authority of the acharyas the acharyas in the past they have been mentioned as great sages like narada vyasa asita devala they are all the sages from the past then in the immediate past in the middle ages say 1500 years back acharyas like shankara acharya ramanuja acharya madhva acharya nimbarka great acharyas like that have accepted krishna as the supreme personality of god so like this all the acharyas they are actually accepting krishna as the supreme personality of god and in the bhagavad gita particularly it is said if you want to learn about the science of the soul you want to learn about the soul you have to uh, perform what is called as acharyopasanam you have to approach the acharya to actually learn about this uh, science of the soul even in the vedas it is said 
Acharyavan Purusho Veda, which means one who has accepted the Acharya under the guidance of the Acharya, one can actually learn the Vedas. One can properly learn the Vedas if one approaches an Acharya and under the guidance of the Acharya gets the knowledge, proper understanding of the Vedas. So therefore, uh, Krishna is speaking to Bhagav uh, Arjuna, the Bhagavad Gita. Now when Krishna was speaking the Bhagavad Gita, Vyasadeva was hearing Krishna. Vyasadeva was hearing Krishna. And Vyasadeva recorded whatever Krishna instructed Arjuna, Vyasadeva recorded in the Mahabharata. The portion of the Mahabharata in which Vyasadeva has recorded Krishna's instructions to Arjuna is called the Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad Gita is just a sm very small portion of the Mahabharata. But it is the essence of the entire teachings of the Mahabharata. So uh, Vyasadeva has recorded that and Vy from Vyasadeva through what is called as a parampara system Srila Prabhupada is receiving this knowledge, this understanding of Bhagavad Gita. It is not just that the text of the Bhagavad Gita or the text of the speech which Krishna made to Arjuna, only that is enough. No, we have to get the understanding also. We have to get the understanding, proper understanding of what did Krishna mean? When he says, Dehi no sminyatha dehe kaumaram yogananjara. This spoken by Krishna to Arjuna. What did he mean by this? So that understanding also we have to receive from the proper source. The proper understanding. So that understanding Srila Prabhupada is getting from his Guru. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. His Guru is receiving from his Guru. Like that it traces back to Vyasadeva. Who actually heard from Krishna? He heard Krishna speaking to Arjuna. Uh, so that way it is uh, knowledge which is perfect knowledge uh, coming in the descending process, coming through the disciplic succession. We say parampara, uh, the disciplic succession is coming. So uh, this is not something which is the author's opinion. Or author's viewpoint. Now, the Bhagavad Gita, we refer to uh, the version or the translation we refer to is given by Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of ISKCON. Now, Prabhupada is not giving his personal um, uh, understanding. No, he is presenting us the knowledge as it is handed down in the parampara. So therefore, nothing is Prabhupada's personal viewpoint or personal opinion or personal uh, 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 viewpoint. No, it is actually what is explained by Krishna and the same understanding is coming down. Let me take a few questions. These are some questions from yesterday. Uh, why is it said spirit soul and not just soul? Uh, soul means the word soul is used for translating the Sanskrit word Atma. Atma means the self. Uh, Atma means the self. So when he says soul, to distinguish the soul as the real self, like people generally think, when I say myself, it means I think I am this body. I am this body. I am this body. But actually, Krishna is telling, I am not this body. I am soul. Soul is within the body. Now, spirit soul, because this body is made up of matter. It is a material body. The soul is not a material soul. It is spiritual soul or spirit soul. Spirit means something which is of a different quality, different uh, nature. It's completely different. In the in a future uh, 
um, di uh, discourse, I will describe the qualities of the soul that Krishna describes in the later verses of the second chapter. So, the qualities of the soul are completely different from the qualities of this material body. So, one difference we already noted that the body dies or perishes or body deteriorates whereas the soul does not deteriorate. You don't die, you don't become old, you don't become diseased, you don't change. You means this soul. So that soul is described as spirit soul to help us understand it is of a different quality or nature, spiritual quality, spiritual nature. While death is the process of changing the next question, the old worn out useless body to a new one, how can we explain uh, when people die young? Nice question. When it is said that uh, a person changes body when the existing body becomes old and useless, that is the normal change of body. Generally, a person changes body at the time of death to a completely new body uh, when the existing body becomes old and useless. But there are instances sometimes when a person die, dies untimely. It's called Akala Mrityu. Death comes before the full lifespan is over. So this Akala Mrityu example is given in the Mahabharata of the Kauravas. The Kauravas died untimely because they insulted the most chaste lady Draupadi. So somebody does very grievous sinful activities, then their duration of life in this body is decreased. It's also possible that somebody uh, is able to increase the lifespan or the duration of life in a particular body by doing some tapasya or by uh, getting the blessings of a very uh, Empowered personality, saintly person, a great saintly person can bless uh, somebody to have a longer duration of life. So that is possible. <clears throat> One of the reasons is why somebody dies young is Akala Mrutti. Second reason is somebody's duration of life that is fixed at the time of birth. Everybody's duration of life generally is fixed at the time of birth. So the duration of life itself may not be 100 years, maybe just 20 years or 10 years or 50 years. That is because the duration of life is based on our past karma. Everybody uh, will not be given the full duration of life. This, just like this ordinarily, this human body, the maximum duration of life is 100 years. But somebody may not have that 100 years uh, as the duration which they got at the time of birth. Now these are all uh, fixed by higher authorities. We cannot uh, choose uh, how, much, how long we want to stay in the body or uh, what kind of duration we have. No, we don't choose. Neither we choose the body nor we choose the 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 type of body nor we can choose the duration now. So that's another reason why somebody dies young. So like this, uh, there are uh, 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 some uh, rare cases, of course it's not common, rare cases where somebody dies young, otherwise generally people die when their uh, existing body becomes old. If we are changing our bodies during our lifetime in a particular body, how is that we remember our childhood days but not our past lives? Uh, good question. Uh, we are able to remember not exactly everything about our childhood or something we may remember, yes. But why do we forget everything about our past life or past lives? That's because at the time of changing the body, we undergo an, a very, very traumatic experience called death. In my previous life, when I had to leave the body at the time of death, I am suddenly separated from all my possessions, my near and dear ones, 
my body itself i have to suddenly leave the body death comes always suddenly uh, so that traumatic experience of having to suddenly leave the body and also what happens to me where am i going what is my future i do not know so that's another traumatic experience then i enter another mother's womb and remain for 9 months if it is a human form of body the soul will remain in that uh, mother's womb for 9 months out of this 9 months 7 months the soul is unconscious seventh month when the consciousness comes uh, to the uh, living being is in the mother's womb then the living being experiences so much of pain so much of trouble uh, it is like a airtight sack the mother's womb and uh, so many worms are there secretions are there acids are there mucus is there so many things are there and it is very 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 uncomfortable now it is very painful and the worms are biting the tender uh, flesh of the uh, uh, the child of the infant embryo inside the mother's womb so this is another traumatic experience till the child comes out of the mother's womb so these traumatic experiences actually uh, are the cause for us to completely forget about our past life. it gets erased completely erased that's how we uh, don't remember anything of our past life thank you very much hari krishna hari krishna subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates